acts or deeds. In doctrine, remember what we said doctrine was. What is doctrine? Boiled down uh, to the basic, it's how you live. It's your dictate, it's your mission statement for how you live. Uh, in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, with sound speech that cannot be condemned. That goes right back to what we were talking about. We as Christians should be at that place where what we say is our bond, what we say is the truth, what we say is fact, and so that what we speak cannot be condemned. And the speech that we have shouldn't be um, questionable. You know, not just that the things that we say they can trust to be true, but the things that we say should be words that sound like they should come out of a Christian's mouth. And I'm going to tell you, it, it, you'll see it in real, real time with people you run into. Uh, but if you get on social media much, you'll see in one post somebody posting a Bible verse, and in the next post they're saying things that a Christian ought not to say. Now how is that person going to be a witness? How is that person going to win anybody to the Lord? Uh, they'll, they'll quote all these Bible verses, and then they're over here saying stuff that just uh, turn people completely away from God. Our speech should uh, reveal who we are. And whether you realize it or whether you don't, your speech does reveal who you are. Mm -hmm. It is unacceptable to God that in one breath we're praising God, in one breath we're quoting Scripture, and in the next breath uh, we're saying things that are ungodly, or, or we're uh, saying things about people, talking behind their back, uh, we're gossiping, we're doing those kind of things. That's unacceptable to God. Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, a spring doesn't bring forth sweet water and salty, both. It's one or the other. And, and a tree will be known by its fruit. And the world is looking at your fruit. The world is watching. They see whether or not you live what you talk. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. When we don't keep our speech sound, and, and like I said, if we don't, we're not going to win anybody to Christ. They're not going to listen to us. Uh, not only that, they're going to be telling everybody else about it. You know that, that one over there, they say they're a Christian, but you know what I heard them say? And, it's going, and then nobody's going to listen to you, and, and you've killed your, your witness, you've killed your opportunity. It goes on, it says, exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Now, we don't have servants, but we serve our employers. Um, and, and this can apply to that too. Uh, when we have a job, you know, the Bible tells us whatsoever we do, do it as unto the Lord. And to give our all. And it's telling us here that, um, that we are to, the way he says it, be obedient to our employees, to our masters, to our employers, uh, to please them well in all things, not answering again. Uh, not prolonging, showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Uh, so what is he saying here? He says not prolonging, which is keeping back, holding back. When you have a job and you go on that job, whether you realize it or whether you don't, whether you think it's true or whether you don't, you're representing Jesus Christ. And when you go there, he says not prolonging, not holding back. You are to give it everything you've got. You are to give 100%. And, and showing all good fidelity, uh, which is trustworthiness and uh, trustfulness and truthfulness. Uh, so we are to give everything we got. We are supposed to be above board. We are supposed to be 
honest and, and forthright. We are supposed to look out for the good of our employer, um, that they may adorn the doctrine of God. Now, what does that mean? What is it to adorn? To put on? To wear? You see what I'm adorned in. When we live this way, they see that we are adorned in the doctrine of Christ. When they look at us, they see what we are, what we're all about. <coughs> uh, so when we live this way, the things that we've been talking about, they see that. We are wearing the doctrine of God. We are wearing the doctrine of Christ. That's what they can see when they look at us when we live this way. And, and <coughs> I can't stress enough how much it matters. You don't know how many people have come to me and said about people that I know. They have come to me and said, I thought he was supposed to be a Christian. And he said that? I thought she was supposed to be a Christian and she did that? It matters how we present ourselves. And you might be one of those, and, I, and I've, I've heard this before, well, I don't care what they think, God knows my heart. He does. He does. <laughs> And that's not necessarily a good thing. And you should care what they think because God told you to care what they think. You can't just cop an attitude and live however you want to live. If you're truly a child of God, then you have to live according to the Word of God. And the Word of God says we are supposed to be different. We are supposed to live different. We are supposed to act different. We are supposed to present ourselves in a different manner. He said, um, not pearl warning, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. In all things, every area of our life, when they look at us, uh, they should see Christ. That's what it's saying. And how do they see Christ? By the way we live. By the way we talk. By the way we act. By the way we react. Uh, how we are on the job how we are uh, in the grocery store, how we are at home, how we are with our kids, how we are with our neighbors, how we are with strangers, should show Christ. So that's for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Listen, he, he's recapping. He said, he gave some examples. This is how we are supposed to live. And he said, because the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, and it teaches us that we should deny uh, these other things, the ungodliness of worldly lust, that we should live the way that we've been talking about, soberly and righteously and godly in the world. This is how we are supposed to live. And looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So he tells us how to live and present ourselves in this world and keep our eyes fixed on what is to come. It says looking for that blessed hope. What is that blessed hope? That's that when this life is over, I have eternity with Christ. We keep that in our mind because then that compels us to live a godly life. Uh, and when we do that, it motivates us and keeps us going. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous, of good works. I, I said we would get to this. He's talking about living differently. He's talking about being set apart. And here he, he says it plainly. Uh, Christ gave himself for us, redeemed us from all iniquity, and purifies us unto himself. And we are to be a peculiar people. What is a peculiar people? It's an unusual people. That's at the root of what it means. We are to be unusual. 
We are not to be like everybody else. We are to be different. I'm telling you, and you can fault me for this if you want to, we can talk about it or whatever, you can disagree with me, it doesn't matter. Dressing like the world and acting like the world is not going to win the world to Christ. And there are so many out there trying that. Well, it, it, they're more likely to accept me if I dress like them and, and act like them. That's not going to work. It does not work. It, it's more likely you end up acting like them. When Christ came, who is our example, he didn't act like the sinners to try to win the sinners. He lived a righteous life to win the lost. And we are to be different. We are to be unusual. We are to be set apart from the world so that there is a definite difference. There is supposed to be a difference. Going back to what I talked about when uh, God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. He made them way different for a reason. So that it was obvious who belonged to God. The same is true of us. We need to look different than the world. We need to act different. We need to speak different. We need to show them Christ. He says, they who have purified himself a peculiar people, zealous or eager, enthusiastic, of good works. Back to the works thing again. Of good actions, good deeds, all of those things. How we live. How we present ourselves. This is what we're supposed to be. Being a peculiar people doesn't mean... Um, you have to speak in tongues and do backflips down the aisle and uh, be slain in the spirit. It means being different than the world. That's what it means. And that's what we're supposed to be. And when we are those things, it's obvious to the world that there is something different. And if they watch us and they see that we are genuine and that we are sincere, then we have an opportunity to present the gospel to them. Then we have an opportunity to win them uh, for Christ. But if we just go out there, uh, the way the church has been doing this, we just go out there and act like everybody else and live however we want to live, and we try to present the gospel, it's formal deaf ears. Mm -hmm. And that's obvious. All you've got to do is look around. It's, it's painfully obvious. If we want to reach the lost for Christ, this will give us an opportunity. I truly believe that. And that's what we should desire. But more than that, we should desire to be obedient to our Lord and our Master. And this is how He says we are to be. And we are to be this way because this is what He says we are to be. And that's what he asks of us, and that's what we should give. That's really it. That's, that's all that I got. And I, I hope you understand it, and I hope there's so many places we could have went, and so much we could have went into. But the bottom line to all of it is, because God says so, we are to be a peculiar people. We are to be a different people set apart people because God says so and if we become that peculiar people that different people that set apart people it shows the world who we are and it's not just talk it's not just words and when they can see that we are genuine and we, when they see that we are sincere then they present us opportunities to witness it may present us opportunities uh, to win people to Christ. And so I hope you take this and think about it, you meditate on it, and um, 
Go back and read it for yourself and let the Holy Spirit teach you. And, and I think that if you do that and you're honest and you're open, you'll see that God wants his people different. He wants them set apart. He wants there to be an obvious difference. And unfortunately, in the church today, there's none. A lot of times there's none. That's it.